in life is knowing the Lord and walking in His way. The most glorious pursuit of mankind is walking in God's image and likeness. It is our utmost desire that you will be richly blessed as you listen to this message from Living Scroll Ministry, aka If the Bible Network. For more life transforming messages, please visit www.livingscrollministry.org. He's the light that flows from the throne of grace changing me and changing me we have come with open hearts who led the ancient walls in power Father we bless you thank you Thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you have accomplished and all that you continue to do for the sons of men on earth. Thank you from the eternal past when you conceived us for glory and for virtue. And in accordance, you brought us forth. Today we are the people of your love. We are the generation of your betrothal. Thank you. Thank you for this relationship and this life that is on the line by love. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the spirit that we have the eternal spirit that you've given to us. Thank you. Thank you because our lives are enriched day by day. Now we live on earth and live in heaven at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have one identity. We are heavenly. And once we engage the earth, the gift of love for mankind. Thank you for this uh, 10 days of uh, worship, intercession, and governmental decree. Thank you for your people all over the world, nation after nation, standing for truth, standing for righteousness, standing for the eternal kingdom. Nabobo standing for the king immortal, invisible. The only wise God, King of kings and Lord of lords, the only potentate, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give God that glory and all the honor. Every day we are excited to live and to do the things that we do, all that you have called us to do. We are full of life, your spirit. And eager to go with your spirit to hear the spirit's voice and to hack it and to yield ourselves. Bless your name, our Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for we are from this nation, Nigeria. People have gone to the police units. Voted. Thank you. Thank you. Beyond the voting and the going to the polling unit, thank you for Nigeria as a country. Because your plan for this country can never be derailed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you because your kingdom is on course in this country. The borders of your kingdom is expanding in this country. Thank you. You do more than we, that we cannot see than the things we can see. 
And for all of you to say thank you. The life of this nation is not defined by an election. And the outcome of an election is defined by the initiatives of the kingdom. Thank you. That's why we have placed the ecclesia here to take the initiative for change and to advance the cause of truth and the cause of your kingdom on earth and in this nation called Nigeria. Blessed be your name, our Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I will be seated in Tyrannos Hall, Akure, as we take the blessing. You are looking at uh, prepare the way. This is uh, February 26th, 2023. And uh, as we continue in uh, our worship intercession and uh, decrees over the nations of our lives, of our families, of our homes, of our individual, of our church, and for the high purposes of God to be established and accelerated on earth. Praise the Lord. God has called us to pray. So prayer is obedience to God. One of the ways you obey God is by praying, because He's the one that asks us to pray. The man ought always to pray and not to, to faint. So prayer is obedience to God. And also prayer is humility before God. We're humbling ourselves before God. Knowing that the power does not lie in us, it lies in another. Knowing that the doing, when a man prays, when a woman prays, you are talking to a one who is higher. And who can do things that you cannot do. So prayer is humility before God. So one of the ways you know a humble spirit is a spirit that always pray. Thank you, Father. I appreciate all the men and women that have prayed for this uh, past 10 days. Amen. God will continue to increase every one of us Amen. with more hunger for Him. Amen. All that we ask is more hunger. Praise the Lord. More hunger. So blessed are they that hunger and test for righteousness and for the righteous one. See, so they shall be few. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll be looking at uh, prepare the way and uh, we'll look at this scripture, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. You see, the voice of him that cries in the wilderness prepare you the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway. For our God. Every valley shall be exalted. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough place is plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it all together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Praise the Lord. I read verse 3 again. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3. The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now, God does not just suddenly come to men, come to people. You have to prepare before he comes. And that's even we also meeting God. They say we should prepare to meet our God. That's why when God was coming to visit them, he said Moses, he said they should prepare. He said, uh, gather the people and prepare them because I'm coming to meet with them. Praise the Lord. But I will talk about Israel. Israel prepare his heart you know, to seek the Lord his God. And to teach uh, counsel, to teach truth in Israel. So preparation precedes the encounter. Praise the Lord. Take it again. Preparation precedes what? Encounter. encounter. He said, gather them and consecrate them for three days. I said, I'm coming to visit them. And he gave Moses the law. Jesus said, you don't just die and come to heaven. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. So he said, I will go and prepare. You see the word preparation? When a man and a woman have prepared their heart to seek for God. Praise the Lord. And then look at this prophetic word in Isaiah 40. He said, prepare ye the way. That the Lord is coming. And what the next in verse 5 says, the glory of God was coming. God was coming amongst men in glory. But before he comes, they should prepare the way. Praise the Lord. 
And he listed out every valley shall be exalted, every mountain shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight. And now, of course, you know he's talking about the people. So you prepare the people, then God will come. God does not come based on structure or system that you have put on ground. God come on the basis of the people. You want the encounter, you want visitation, you want this one. God comes on the basis of what? The people. That's even you as an individual, there is a measure of encounter you cannot have with God. There is a measure of life you cannot have with God or you won't be able to have with God until you have prepared yourself for that dimension. And that's why the Holy Ghost is given in the first place. So that in alignment, thank you, Pastor Nameka Zubike, for that word this morning. You spoke on alignment. You know, so that uh, in alignment with the Holy Ghost, then he prepares us to carry the glory and to receive God in glory. That glory will talk about a dimension that God wants to release, some certain things God wants to do in your life. He wants to do it, but you are not ready. You are not prepared. That's why I say that a new wine must be put where? In a new wine skin. And that wine skin will have to be prepared. God does business with the people. So many times we are thinking of system, structures, more ways, more methodology, more ways of doing things, things where you can create things, Abby. God does not flow on things you created. God flows on the state of man's heart. Hallelujah. He works with the state of the heart. So if we want the revival, we prepare the people. Hmm. There will be preparation. Where the will of the people, that's what God does business with. Pastor Unameka, you were talking about Balaam this morning, right? Yes, sir. And God looked at him and God said what? Go. Why? Because God has seen his will, he wanted to go. Even though he was asking God, should I go? Should I not go? But God, God, God works with your will. He has seen that the man's will wanted to go, he said go. The will. That's why when your heart is set on something and you come to God praying, except maybe for extended mercy, you just say, I will answer you according to the multitude of your heart. Hmm. Then you go. I mean, why God was displeased and he was angry? When he cannot see the possibility of change inside. Hmm. Even if he, if he answers you the other way around, you will not agree. Yeah. Hmm. And here you are coming to him, he won't talk. He will leave you. He won't talk. You come, come, he won't talk. You are disturbing too much. say, I go. Since God put man, since after God put man on earth, it has always been what God has always been working with the will of man. What do you want? He has his own will. You and I, how do we prepare ourselves? Uh, preparing our mind, our heart, our will to align with his own will. But if we want our own, it's okay, go and take it. Was it the will of God to give them King Saul? The people say they wanted the Saul. What did God tell the What did he say? God, God picked it. Hey, God was the one that chose our king for us. We only prayed, we wanted king, and God said, you know, all those times God was not even happy. They wanted the king. God himself went and picked for them. So on certain things you will talk, 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 and God give it to you. That will not mean that God is even happy. In certain instances, it's not. It's not. The father and the prodigal son, the man wanted to give the son the inheritance to go and squander with Harlot. He came, he said, give me. I'm very sure that will not be the first time he's coming. Maybe the father will try to talk him, but he will keep coming again. Yeah, go and take it. Let me. The father give it to him. And look, and when he got to the end of where he was going, he came back to the square, square root, where he started. Where he originally would have been. But the father did what? That father represents God and also in his dealing, in his redemptive ways with God. That prodigal house represents the story of our redemption. He said he gave him, take it. Go. He gave him and he loved. When he squandered it, he come again. Came back again. Of course, the father accepted him. In his love, praise the Lord. So, if you want to see God on a global scale, maybe in a city, in a region, we have to prepare the way, right? The way is what? People. Can we say the way is people? The way is people. When you say prepare the way, when you say, I will say prepare the way, you will not echo prepare the people. And those of us fooling virtually just and you can type it, you know, on the chat box. So prepare the way. Prepare the way. Yes. That's it. Because in the day that God will come, he will come for the people. What did Jesus do in his three years ministry? He did a lot of things and everything. He didn't create structures and systems. I'm not, I'm not talking about saying you should not create structures and systems, but watch this. 
Jesus prepared the people. You see, you understand? You see, he prepares what? Prepared the people. And when the Holy Ghost came, how did, where, did, where did he come to? He came to the people. Sometimes when in a certain uh, assembly, like what happens now, in a certain choice setting, we start fighting. The way and manner, the system and the structure. How the, the core is about system and structure, the way we are doing something. That's not what God does business with. God does business with what? If God sees a hungry heart anywhere today, you become like a mighty rushing wind to that place. He sees that heart. He will come like, and that's what Jesus did in John 15, verse 3. Jesus looked at them and said, You are already clean. Because of the word, the words are spoken to you. Jesus walked with those men and he changed them. Changed them. And then they were in a manner that God could what? God could come to them and meet with them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Prepare the way. You know, we will not be able to apply our gospel faith or our Christian experience or our faith if we don't understand the main thing. Like we often say that the main thing is to keep the main thing. The main thing. What is the main thing? Our Christian faith moves on a changing people. A changed people, past then, and a changing people. We will be stuck if the people are not changing. The Bible says 3,000 were converted. 3,000 changed. Praise the Lord. And then should be changing. You join it further again in the Acts again, you say about 5,000 were changed. When the nature of man, if the nature of man is not changed, you cannot do anything. Nothing can be accomplished. Because that nature is evil. Change. That's the first encounter with God is to change. So that is like Christ is what? A new creation. What do you expect in a place that you have a, a hundred thousand people? Eighty-nine thousand are bad. What kind of change do you want in that place? What kind of a, a visitation do you want in that place? Change the people, you will see the glory. And the power that God gave us. What you read in Isaiah 40, you see it in Matthew 28. Is it not the, not the one John the Baptist quoted? Jesus said that all power in heaven and on earth is given to me. He said, now go into the nations and what? He said, and teach them. And then baptize me, change them. He said, baptize them in the name of who? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded. He said, look at, he said, look at the power that I was given. The power to cause a change, to change people. Change people. People are congregating and they are not changed. People are around for so long and they are not what? Change. You are, God do it. How can a man, a woman walk with God for five years and no visible changes? You see that scripture in Matthew? He said, oh, look at the power. He said, all power is given to me. Right? In heaven and on earth. And in the strength of that power, he said, go. And teach them. We change changing people. It's not this power in the atmosphere that is flying in the air. You have to teach people, teach them, so disciple them. Teach them. Sit down with them. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. And Nigeria now do election now. They bring money now. Even people that have been together with us in the church, right? Mm-hmm. Some are pastors, some could be deacons, some could be any kind of name. They bring money now, they start voting the other way. Amen. Because people that have not been changed, where people that have, there is no conviction in their heart, we need men and women of conviction. Conviction can never take money and go the other way. Who was telling us a story? I don't know to the other person. Make is it you or Femi that there were some boys in the north? They were begging for fifteen naira. You were the one that told us. Please come and tell us that story again. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, I had this story, a very intriguing story of a, a small boy who was begging for arm, like 15 era. So the man of God was telling him, don't worry about the 15 That was in the northern Nigeria. In the northern Nigeria, yes. They are Muslims. You know, the man of God said, don't worry about the 15 era. I'm going to give you like 5,000 naira, but on one condition, you follow me to church. The boy said, I'm no more interested in the money. That means his conviction was more than the hunger. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
So what change? If you read in John chapter 3, where you see that, uh, except you are born of water and of what? The Spirit. It's not people that, not people that accept a, a, a concept in their head. Maybe accept it in your head. Mentally, Jesus is Lord and Savior. A lot of people in their mental state, Jesus is Lord and Savior. You know, Jesus is uh, this, Jesus is that. But in their heart posture, Jesus is nowhere. See, except the man is born of water. This is a total repent change. He said, you are a man is born of water and of the spirit. He said, he cannot what? He is not a part of the kingdom. You can be part of a garden or part of an association, but you are not part of the kingdom. You are born of water and you are born of the spirit. These are the people that can yield to God. What is the Preparing the people. You know, we know commonly, you know, go for school outreaches. Please. This is a very touching thing in, in, in my heart. I'll share. You go for school outreaches. One in, I looked at hundreds of people gathered and looked into their eyes. Those that are gathered and those that are not gathered, that are moving and looked into their eyes. You know, you looked into their eyes, they don't. Uh, you see, a lot, they have no value for righteousness, no value, they're interested in God. Youth, young people, and they're like all over everywhere. What is our plan and program for them? Jesus said, go and change these ones. And we're expecting the glory to just jump down, pass back, pass through the back of the door. No. What's our plan or program for them? There's no agenda for them. At least I've been in this country for a very long time. And I've been in the Christian faith for some time here. It's the young ones, youth. We've been doing it for more than 10 years. So we've seen people in hundreds of thousands. Young ones, just in this locality alone. All over the whole world, nation. We just need to run into hundreds of millions of youth. Youth looked into their eyes. You can see the massive work that we have. He said, Go, he said, this one, he said, go and prepare them for the divine life. Prepare them for my glory so that I will come. God wants to visit. It is the condition of men's heart that will bring him. The state of men's heart. Christianity, or I do my own Christianity, and then God blesses me solve all my problems and I share my testimony and everything. But if we want that corporate global visit, you know, the glory of God to be seen and visible and covers the earth like the waters covers the sea, there's a lot of work we have to do. There's a place for intercession, then our, the borders of our intercession must be extended. Yes. All these 30 minutes prayer, oh. you mumble something before you sleep in the evening, mumble something when you wake up in the morning. Praise the Lord. If you see the way iniquity is advancing, Amen. A man stood up, he said, I'm, 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 I'm not a man, I'm a woman. And you want to handle that man with 30 minutes prayer, 15 minutes prayer. He said, this kind, this one was just demon possession. It's not, this one is high. He said, this one is higher than that one. Yes, sir. Where a man say, you know, this is the nation. This one, where the spirit of man is evil. This one, that one was an evil spirit that then had man. So to even cast that one out, he said, he cannot go and say prayer and fasting. But this one, where the nature of man has become evil. How do you handle that dimension? How do you handle it? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So our focus, your focus, my focus, now our global focus is say prepare the way that the Lord wants to come. And that prepare the way is prepare what? The people. We should not lose, lose focus on the fivefold ministry. When God comes to visit, does not visit system or structure. Right? He come to visit who? The people. So, you, like here, all of us that is sitting here, now let's take all of us here now. God wants to visit us. Let us go and create more system, create more kind of structure of doing things, of administration, create this experience there, create that experience there, we'll do wonderful meetings and wonderful program. God does not visit a meeting. God visits the people in the meeting. Yeah. Their heart. The extent of his en that encounter, of his dwelling presence amongst the people, or his visitation among them, is the extent of the depth and width of their heart. You see why we need to pray more? Because we can only do so much. How many people can you disciple in, in, in millions? You know the global statistics? Every year, between 130 to 150 million people are born by United Nations statistics. Every year. 
and every year about over 55 million people die what does that number tells you everybody that is born into the world tells you your responsibility has increased mm. our responsibility as the church every single person that is born and in the year 130 one that let me say 135 million will be about that number and then we'll be burden for everybody that leaves this world over 55 million people die on a yearly basis that tells us the extent the burden that we should carry amen but you know you can come here and then forget your basic responsibility and then the devil will give us a lot of things to occupy us with right if some people are fighting for pulpit who should be the one to preach i have not preached for some time i'll preach for some time uh, and everything like that some are looking for online popularity amen like that online is like that so you be a big name like that. so some are looking for all kinds of things but these people that needs to change how many people are changing under us how many in matthew chapter in mark you have it in uh, matthew in mark in mark for jesus gave the parable of the sower the sower so please when you think about the glory and uh, revival and uh, the god visitation and everything what is the magnetic pull that will bring it the people right what will be the magnetic pull that will bring it the people. then jesus was here and jesus left here he said he's coming back again how is he coming he said he will not come until the church is what not the system will. he said a perfect church without spot and what and wrinkle it is when the church is ready that is what the, it's not a calendar date it is when the people are ready then he will come and then we see the fivefold ministry was given say for what to prepare the saint right that's uh, ephesians chapter 4 11 to 13. let me put it there on the shattered box he gave some apostles prophet teachers right yes to equip the saint to perfect them for the work of the ministry and the fulfillment of that word, you see, Ephesians 4, verse 11 to 13, the fulfillment of it is seen in Revelation 19, verse 7. Read that Ephesians 4. You see, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the same, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come, how many? All come in the unity of the it's not one general jumping up and down this is god raising his generation on earth right if god anoint you and make you the general in code the way we call it general is for you to raise other generals that are like you everybody around you to make it most say that i wish that all god's children are what prophets how can only one man shine for 50 years you have not raised somebody that will carry a greater oil than you I won't stay there because you never rise beyond that person. And the Bible says the glory that is coming behind should be greater than the glory that is what? Yeah. I, you belong to a generation that is going. The generation right beside you should carry a greater what? Something than you. Should carry something greater. See, the part of the job shines what? Right. Right. In each successive generation, what they carry should be higher. The intensity of light, higher revelation, should be what? Should be higher. Jesus himself said, let me go. You will do greater works than what? But I did. Well, Jesus will struggle to convert one, you know? <laughs> but helped him. He worked on 12. And some he took his here and there. But Peter, the one, 3,000. Jesus said, never saw that one. He's looking at that one from heaven. He said, wow, I said it. That's my boy. <laughs> the one, how many? 2,000. Jesus never saw that dimension all his life on it. You finish speaking, they want to stone you. But Peter finished speaking, the whole of them, three times, they were caught in their heart. That was a very high operation. In that world was fulfilled greater works than the things I'm doing. What is that greater work? The people that were changing. You start counting miracles. One body leg grew, somebody hand grew, somebody ear. No. Is it the greater works? A thing in the context of changing human life. He said, go and teach them and baptize them into the God, into the Father, into the Son, and into the Holy Ghost. Baptize them into us. They will walk with the Father. They will walk with Jesus, and they will have the capability and capacity to walk with the Holy Ghost. I have many things to tell you. I cannot tell you now. When the Holy Ghost comes, he will tell you. 
Because you have the capacity to hear the Spirit. You have more capacity then to receive from, from God. You see the kind of people who should be breathing, breathing in our meetings, in our assembly, in our association, people that are joined to you. Praise the Lord. That's why you must check the life of everybody that is connect anybody you disciple or mentor, you should check their life. Don't just be, don't just be satisfied with their followership. They are always there. They are, no, no. Be, be check their life. Because that is the work. You check it. Not just followership. They are always around. Hey, let's do this one. There. No. How is their life changing and responding? Okay, I was talking about efficient, right? He said, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto what? A perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Revelations 19 verse 7. You see the work? You see, you see the journey? When you transform what? Don't be proud. Don't, be, don't go and brag that God has given you uh, 5,000 people in 5 days. Right? The people that come to what extent is their life change and transform? That this one can stand for truth and stand for righteousness without compromise. That if one of these persons go and become a judiciary, go enter the judiciary today and becomes a sitting judge, mammon cannot corrupt that person's decision. He said that as a judge, that this one will not compromise. He said, and of Zion it shall be said that this and this and that they were born there. Prepare the people. Don't use the people to build systems and structures. Prepare the people. Build the people. Build them into a habitation for God. Where they can walk with God. Hear God the way you hear God. Yes, obey God the way you obey God. Do the things that you do and then they do more. Amen. That's when the glory will come. You know, it's a very sweet. When I pack everybody like this, they're under me. And when I come like this, you know, Papa is coming. Abby? Mm -hmm. uh, when I come and everything. Yes. Amen. You can't even pray until you come and sow money into my life. And then when prayer comes, because it is because of that seed that you sow, so that I bring more seed. When you pray, God can hear you. Yes, sir. Yes. Beyond seed sowing of money, the frequency of the heart attracts a deeper answer of prayer. Yes. Does God answer your seed? He can, but not just that the heart. God does business with the human heart. Mm -hmm. Then the heart can use praise, uh, seed, and it's not that is the heart. That's the factor underneath. We've seen that Ephesians for Revelation 19, verse 7. Let's read from verse 5. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and you that fear him, both small and great. Verse 6. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reign. Can we read verse 7 together? Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready. God walking on earth is not okay. God will just wake up and start coming. You know, I talked talk about prepare, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place. So by the time you are coming, the place is prepared. He told me he prepared the people to meet with me, consecrate them for three days, right? He said, prepare, he must say, prepare to meet their God. And Jesus, when he was telling them, go and baptize all nations, prepare, prepare them for me. I'm coming to the nations. He said, go and baptize and disciple them and I will come there. Now, look at this Revelation 19 verse 7. He said, the marriage of the Lamb is what? Come. And his wife has made herself ready. This scripture is very important. When the bride is ready, the bride of Christ, what you see the work we saw in Ephesians 1, that we should all come Unto the perfect man. This they say when we arrived there in Revelation 19, verse 7, the moment our feet landed on that spot, that was when God rose up on the throne and started executing his eternal judgment. Revelation 19. His revelations after this, immediately after this Revelation 19, you saw that I saw a white horse. He that sat upon him, you know, and his name is the word of God. And I saw white horses writing behind him. And immediately they joined the Antichrist. Revelation 19. In this same Revelation 19, they joined the Antichrist and the false prophet. You know, they, before the end of the time, the Antichrist will have the false prophet who will do miracle and everything. You see the Revelation 13. You see the beast having so many horns here and there. Immediately the church, look at it. It's just like when the bride may want to do a wedding now, right? 
you know, most times the bride, okay, the woman is the bride now. You know, most times the bride that determines the wedding. As soon as the everybody will be waiting, as soon as the bride comes in, then we start, right? Everybody start doing here and there like that. So, as soon as the bride, you see, the bride that had made herself already in the context of Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. Now, why? Once the bride was ready, then God rose up. It was then the eternal judgment began. God judged the uh, the Antichrist, judged the false prophet. In Revelation 20, God judged Satan. Right? In Revelation 20. That's why I saw an angel came and bound Satan and, and chained Satan and threw him into the bottomless pit. After some time, Revelation 20, they lose him again. You see, God began doing the eternal judgment when the bride is ready. That's why I say, hasty, who should hasten the coming? He said, hasting the coming. He said, the Lord is not slow concerning his promise. Peter, he said, hasting the coming of the Lord. Who will hasten it? The people. Praise the Lord. So if you think it's just about the priesthood, if the priesthood, they just need one heavily anointed man in the city of Akure and everything, Akure will not see the glory. He said, that man will raise a generation who can impact and touch the people massively. God can visit the land. Will God not encounter the land? It's, it's going to be in measure. But we're talking about the deeper and the higher measure. It's based on the frequency of the people on the land. Well, God does business with the people. If it's just one man, how, there's a dimension the man will see. Okay, just like in a city like this, in a city of 200,000 people, maybe about five people know God. And they are heavily anointed. Things happen here and there like that. Like that. But that city, let's, let's now say that about in the city of 200,000 people, 160,000 are on fire for God. What do you think that city will look like? Mm -hmm. So in a congregation or in a place in where you gather men together, about 600 men, maybe like, uh, maybe 600 men, maybe about 30 are just there, you know, maybe about, maybe about 20 are really on fire, another 25 are really, really, you know, Zealot and another one, but the rest we are just carrying the multitude along from one hill to the another hill, from one program and that program to just keep them. But you now imagine a congregation of 600 people and 450 are on red hot fire. Mm. You will see a dimension of glory that has not been seen. Yeah. Mm. That's how God works. It's not about just one man's prayer, and God will not go be behind the wheel of the people, and that is why the people must be what. Prepared. Prepared. Nigeria is suffering these days not just because of our leader, but also because of our people. First, leader, not leader first, people first. The person that is leading you in Nigeria that is doing what he's doing, now take him to Norway, let him go and be their president in Norway. You cannot sit down there for one second. You know why? The people. The people. In dictate, look, all those countries that are dictatorship, you know what they first do? They first of all crush the will of the people. That's why they stop internet, they stop the people having access. You know where the power lies? The power does not lie in a system or a structure. The power lies in the people. Any human being that has power on it, that power is given to the person by people. You hear the days of revolution, when the people rose up, all those tyrants, what happened? You kick them away. Putin now is invading Ukraine. His greatest fear is the Russian people. So that's why they are putting information, they stop internet, they stop this news channel. They, are, they keep feeding them propaganda. Feeding them propaganda because power comes from the people, the will of the people, and that's why a country like Nigeria, some of these African countries, they subject them to massive poverty. So that when one person come look like a suko, I just give, somebody come, you know the man is bad, but he give your shit a uh, job, right? Mm -hmm. That's what party do now. They, you know, job now is give it a slot to party people. Mm -hmm. You know, he, 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 the man that employed my son, you know, mm -hmm. that sentiment because the subject, you know, is the people. You know, it's the people that governs what happens on earth. The people, that one, the people, the people. Not only in uh, even in places like North Korea, they make sure their people are not exposed to information or these iron curtains because they know the will of the people. Praise the Lord. So when I say now that Revelation said nineteen, the one the bride was ready, then God rose up and started His judgment. All this one, Satan, you bind him today, the next two hours he comes back, this one. This one, they carry Satan, chain him and throw him to the bottomless piece. The first prophet, the antichrist, this is how the age you, age you close when the people are ready. The church. When the church rises. That's why Nigeria problem will not be solved by an election. 
the ecclesia, the church must take initiative. Just like you saw in Acts of the Apostles, you saw all through the scripture. God took initiative and expressed it to his people. Take initiative. And create system and structure that will stand in truth, stand in equity, fairness, and justice. Righteousness. Just like you saw it in Acts of the Apostles. Imagine those kind of believers, they were not gathered waiting for one Messiah to come in an election. We are not the one that produced him. He stood up on his own. You just sit down there and just, you just sit down powerless, now looking for somebody. And hey, this one, this one is talking something, he's talking some more sense. You are just looking, your hands are tied, but that's not the ecclesia. We take initiative. It's a council, it's a legislative council and a judicial council. Look at those men that's what they're possible. They were a nation within the nation. Yes, they say the nation said we're even afraid of them. Where the ecclesia in Nigeria can do something that even your government will come to is how do you people do it? Can you give us sons or children that can come and help us replicate it? I'm telling you. Where we can create things in the educational sector as ecclesia, we have the people, we have the resources. Where we can create and it's doing so well that ah, the government will come and say, ah, are people doing it? Let's go and meet these people for solution. You hear that prophet and say that one or two people will hold their hand. Let us go to what? To the Jew. That God is here. We can see God amongst you. Not that we are now helpless. Our hands are tied behind our back. We ourselves are looking for a Messiah from the world. That's not the Ecclesia. Ecclesia takes initiative. And it, you know, and it's so painful. When you, it's okay. Let's leave it. People that should know better. Should know better. What can we come together and create? And take initiative and do something. What can we do in the in the area of agriculture? I synergize and say, wow. If a people does not do anything, change will never come. China took their destiny in their own hand. Yes. The seventeen, the eighties, and then now they are now in superpower. If we are waiting for the world to help us solve problem for us, help bring solution to us, then we will continue to wait until that kingdom come. Can we prepare? Praise the Lord. Yeah. And then this Revelation 17, 19. Okay, let me leave this one now so that we can do something, round up and pray. It was when this, before this, look at it. Uh, it's a whole lot. I'm not teaching on that, but the fall of Babylon. Revelation 17 and 18 talks about the fall of Babylon. And then Revelation 19 talks about the bride was ready. As the church is rising and advancing in her purposes and her call and is preparing the people and is getting ready. That is how Babylon will fall. The fall of Babylon goes hand in hand with the sequence of what you saw in Ephesians 4, verse 11 to 13. That's how Babylon will fall. The system that governs this world. And once Babylon fell, Revelations 18, Revelations 19 unveiled the bride of Christ. That was how Babylon fell. When the church rose up into her purposes and her calling, into her full stature and weight and walked in that stature and weight on earth and create system, structures, injustice, in equity and in righteousness. That's how Babylon will fall. You don't sit down somewhere and be expecting one angel to come and dismantle Babylon for all. We are the one collectively. We rise up and do the things we ought to do in faith, in love. And in the kingdom, and Babylon will fall. Now, Babylon will fall, God will not proceed to judgment. Babylon, and as soon as Babylon fall, God will not proceed to not join the. It's just like when the system fall, right? You will not begin to join the people behind the system. Is that not how they do it? Anytime, Lord, for instance, now when Biafra fell, right? The now snap, okay, who are the people that are in, in behind Biafra, right? When the Second World War failed, when Hitler failed, the war has failed, they have lost the war, they now now stretch forth their hands and start cashing the who are the people behind it. It is when Babylon falls that you see God rose up to judgment and he started handpicking them one by one. Revelation 19, the Antichrist, the first prophet. Revelation 20, Satan himself. And then he said, even the present heaven and the present earth, they were judged in Revelation 20. They say heaven and earth disappeared and there was found no place for them. Even this heaven and this present earth will be judged. But it will happen when the bride is ready. Is ready. You think you are the one that will defeat Satan? It's not, it's an angel. Revelation 20. Verse 1. Revelation 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless what? 
spit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him what? A thousand years. He's an angel that bound Satan. It's not you. It's not your anointing. You can chase him out of your life, out of your realm, out of your calling, what God has assigned us to do and everything. But to deal with Satan himself, is that to be the work of angels. It's not us. He's an angel who bound him. He's an angel casted him into the bottomless pit. It's the work of angels. All these demons, you bind them, they will go away. But who will deal with them is angels. Praise the Lord. The gospel is direct application of God to human heart. The gospel is direct application of life and immortality to the human life. He said, who has abolished death? First, Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 10. He said, who has abolished death? And has, he said, Jesus Christ has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. You see what the gospel does? Praise the Lord. Amen. Take it again. I say, the gospel is direct application of God to the human heart. I say, God, to visit a land, the people determine the visitation. God dwells in a land, the people there determine his habitation there. God dwells amongst a people. The people in there determine the extent and nature of his dwelling in them and amongst them. We can build system and structure, that's okay. But if those system and structures don't further build the people, then we have ultimately failed in our most vital calling. See, the five food was given to build the people. And then the people will bring God. This church, when the bride is ready, the highest glory will come to earth. And these events will happen. One, Babylon will fall. The Antichrist and the false prophet will fall. Satan himself will fall. The new heaven and the new earth will be revealed. It was when the bride was, when the church was ready, Revelation 19, right? I see in Revelation 20, God judged all those who needed to judge, right? Like then in Revelation 21, God revealed the new heaven and the new earth. You see that glory? It's a, revel- it's a glory. There's a glory that will not come. Now, finally, in uh, that uh, parable of uh, of uh, the sower, you see, a sower went to sow, right? You see, some fell by what? The wayside. Some fell by on what? On rocky. Sorry. Some fell on among tongues. And some fell on the good ground. And those parables Jesus gave to illustrate the state of the human heart. <laughs> Is it some they didn't understand? Is immediately Satan came and stole the world. Is it some they took it, but they were not ready for? They just they just want the benefits. Ah, right, God will heal you. God will bless you. God will give you money. God will give you car. Anything outside of that description, they don't want it. You see, immediately one small trouble came. See, they were offended. They were angry. Those one fell on rocky ground. They have no heart for God, but they just want the benefits that God can give them. And then God tested the heart of Moses. Bro, is it not about the land? An angel will follow you and give you that land. Moses said, no. It's not the land that you want. It's you that you want. Sometimes be careful. Some certain things that comes to you, maybe okay, God give you this one and everything. Check it. Check your heart very well. Because your heart will determine a lot of things about you. Like we talk about Balaam, right? Yes, sir. His heart was not okay. And God said, go. And he went, right? God told Moses, go. An angel will go. She be the land now. You have offended me now. I'm angry. I'm not going again, but go for the land. Some people will just rush and rush into the land. Most you say we are not going if you are not following us. Amen. Because it's not about the land, it's about what? It's about him. And that's why when that boy said in, uh, in Isaiah 40, he said, Cry. A voice of one crying in the wilderness. If you read that scripture further again, he said, What shall I cry? And he said, What shall I cry? What is the message? What shall I say? He says, say unto the cities of Jerusalem, say, behold your God. I was begin to learn to point people to what? To God. Them walking with God. Yielding and aligning with God. He said, the voice that say a voice of one crying. Okay, what is that voice? He said, what shall I cry? He says, say to the cities of Jerusalem. He said, behold your God. Read that scripture down, you see there. After it talks about the glory. That God is coming to visit you people. You know, and tabernacle and make his dwelling amongst men. The other one, he fall among thorns. He said that one, the thorns grew, right? That one is even very dangerous. He said when that, uh, it was, the first one, he said the Satan stole the world. The devil took the word out of their heart. The second one, 
He said the world withered away, right? It grew, but it withered down. He said the third one, he said why the, the thing was growing, he said the thorns were growing side by side. The two grew, he said the thorn, they grew. The cares of this world, right? The deceitfulness of wishes, right? And then desire for what? Other things. Very innocent things. He said, just the desire for other things. You see, they were growing. You see, they now shook the world. The world grew, but it was not fruitful. You like, you see, a mango tree. Now, after it has grown, there is no fruit on that mango, right? It was not fruitful. You see, people in church, in, they are born again. They have been around God for 20 years. But you cannot see the fruit of the holy life inside. No fruit. And Jesus met that fig tree that was no fruit. What did he do? He cursed it. That's a cost. That's a generation that is cursed. They are in the house. They are serving God. They are heading committee chairman. This one want to do this project. They are there. But the fruit of this kingdom of this life is not there. What was the first thing that God did for mankind? He said, be fruitful and what? Multiply. That man that received that uh, talent, that went and hid it and was not fruitful. What did he say? In Matthew 26, he said, cast that unprofitable servant into outer world. That, that was not, not that he was not in the house. Not that he did not collect the talent from the master. Not that he did not know the master, but he was not what? Fruitful. It was a basis for God to throw them out. Cast that on put to what? Saba. And so he said the tree grew. And then the thorns, he said what? The shocky that it became what? No fruit. Now I say it grew, but there was no what? No fruit. And that was what Jesus was giving us a window to it. That fig tree, he said, he said that tree is what? It's a generation that is what? Cause and in another parable, he says, You should throw him into outer darkness because he because was not fruitful. He said, At least you should have put my something in the bank. Let me receive you. You say you are born again, people say they are born again, and the fruit of this life is not there, they are just barely around. You see them, they're always around, but the fruit, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then the last one, he said, What these are they who in a what in a good and a honest heart. Having received the word, they keep it and they bring forth what? Fruit with what? With patience. So, what's the simple word tonight? We should prepare what? The people. And that's the prayer I'm going to be praying as we intercede, take this global intercession that this massive work will be ongoing in the air to prepare the people. Look at the generation that is coming behind us. Look at the multitude. Look at them. Go and stand at the junction. Look, look at children that are going to school. How many of them will call upon the name of the Lord? How many of them will turn to the faith of just men? And yet, yeah, this is the work. I want to see the glory. I want to see God. I want to see this and like that. Like. The people must be turned. If the people are not turning to you see Nigeria? If the people inside Nigeria are not turning to God in a material significant way, you will not see God in this nation. You can have bread though, just like they have it in Dubai, in some of these places like that. Abi, yes. in America, they have enough bread and uh, food and water there. Yes. Abi, are they turning to God more? Yes. From there, they are exporting, importing, exporting, Abi, exporting, Abi. From there, they are exporting all kinds of evil all over the world. There's a lot of food in Russia. There are, storm, there are a lot of them, they are turning more food than us in Nigeria. There. You can see the kind of evil in those lands. When people are not turning to God. God will measure not by the stake of how, how hungry are you, how you are not hungry, how te you are technologically advanced, how not technologically advanced you, you are. You understand? No. God will look at the state of the people that are in there. Uh, Lord saw, he said, Lord saw the land of plain of Sodom and Gomorrah. He said it was like the garden, garden of God. But what did the Bible say? He said, but the men of Sodom were evil before the Lord. So he saw the land, he saw the city, ah, wonderful. Like the seat, like the garden of Eden, but Bible account is that. But the men of Sodom were what? They were yes. evil before God. You yourself must be changing. Me myself, I must what? Change. Change. You hear in the uh, in the Bible, three thousand converted. Change, change, and we're changing. Five thousand change, and we're not just talking about evangelism. Go and do figure count, okay? Uh, count, count like that, but people that are changing, he said, Teach them. He said, All power is given to me. Let me read that scripture, then we we'll pray. Matthew 28, from verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven 
and earth. What's your understanding of power today now? Are your, re your our references to power, right? Yes, uh -huh. You know, it's demonstration, right? Mm -hmm. But look at it. All power in heaven and earth is given to me, right? Mm -hmm. Now go in the strength of this power. You see, that's why I told them, don't go anywhere until you are endued with power from what? On high. Which is that power? This same power. Or power in heaven, what? And on earth. You see, until you are endued, you are filled with what? Power. This same power, right? Uh -huh. He said, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost and what? The power. This same power. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven. And he said, go you therefore. And what? Can we echo that word together? And what? And teach. All what? He said, and teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. He said, teaching them to what? Observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. You see the kind of people the people have become, right? They come into God, encounter God, and they are totally transformed. They're able to walk with God and follow God to the ends of the earth. They're able to obey God as the way Father Abraham would obey God. This is the end of our labor. And this is the kingdom. This is what? The kingdom. It changed and it transformed what? People. You see this self-centeredness everywhere. Somebody is born again for 15, 20 years. He's more self-centered than Christ. Mm. Self-centered than Christ. Can we begin to pray? We begin to pray. This is our heart cry. Give us this body in this light. Now we are we ourselves are changing, have been transformed, and seeing this same change all around us. Beginning from where we are. How can you be satisfied leading a people that are not changing? You have led them. For five years, six, seven years, ten years. He said, teach them. He said, in the energy of this power, he said, go. And then teach them. He said, baptizing them. Immerse him is an immersion. Immerse, not just immersion into water now. He said, immerse them. Immersion into the Father. These ones, they know the Father. These ones are sons and their daughters. He said, immerse them into the son. If you have seen them, you have seen Jesus. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. This one who said the same, if you have seen me, you have seen Christ. Paul wrote, imitate me as I imitate Christ. He said, immerse them into the Holy Ghost. Where their new native land, it becomes the Holy Ghost. He said, He that is born of the Spirit is what? Spirit. If you are born in a land, you become a native of that land. Mm -hmm. So one who is born in the Holy Ghost is a native of the Holy Ghost. That one will not contradict, will not go against the Spirit. If the Holy Ghost says, follow this road, they will follow that road. If the Holy Ghost says, I need you to stay in this land, they will stay in that land. If the Holy Ghost says, I want you to marry this person, they will marry that person. They have become a native of the Holy Ghost because they were born in the Spirit. He said, that is born of the Spirit is Spirit. They are native of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit becomes your nativity. Nativity. Truth becomes your native life. Your native life is truth. And the Lord himself comes this one thank you he said teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you see these people he said this is see this is how you prepare this is efficient and what we are reading here is Ephesians 4 verse 11 to 13 this is it go and teach them go and impact them go and immerse them immersion baptism immersion into the father into the son this is normal church life it's not my regular church life. Thank you. Jesus, thank you. He is we follow God wherever he goes. The wind blows wherever it's listed. You hear the sound, but you don't see. He says, so is everyone that is born of the spirit. That is that conversion. When you are converted into spirit and life. He said the gospel. The gospel is the direct application of God to the human heart. The gospel, our gospel, is the direct application of life and immortality to the human life on earth. Gospel. This is how we prepare the generation. This is how we prepare the people for God.
And then God will come on the stage when the people are prepared. He said, go and prepare you, my people. Prepare you the way. Prepare you the people. And then I will come. You see, John the Baptist came and wore that prophecy. He wore that prophetic garment. He said, I'm the, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare you the way. And how did he do it? He gathered Israel. They came to meet him in the wilderness. And he preached the message of repentance. When he, this, look at how he prepared the nation. He pre preached repentance. Change your ways. He said, amend your ways. And on that foundation, upon that backdrop, that background, Jesus came on the scene. He said, John went before him. Prepare the people. They elect people, not everybody. Some will still not change. Even at that time, the people they were not changing. Look at the system and the structure of the Pharisee, the religious establishment. They never changed. They never repented. They never knew God. But the people out there, they say the public and the hallows. They had John, they came that prepared their way, and Jesus came and met them. And when he came, he went directly to them. So it's not system, it's not structures. The people will build accurate system and structure, righteous system and structure that are just, that are equity. They say this foundation, the justice and judgment are the and righteousness and judgment are the habitation, the foundation of his throne. The people will rise up in that accurate structure of judgment, justice, and righteousness. When we going to pray and provoke this spirit all over the earth, our heart will burn. Thank you. Our kata in Gori Shaba. Jesus with us. Kele boto be manta le boko to. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The glory. Thank you. Thank you. All this prayer we pray so that the people will hear. He said the effective. The effectual, how did he put it? The effectual prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. What is that power? Power that will cause a change. He said, All power has been given to me. Now go in the energy of that power and then teach the nation and baptize them. He said, Convert them, change them so that they can obey, hear me, and obey everything I've told you. He said, The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man makes tremendous power available. That power that we cause a change. Men are turning to God and turning to righteousness. The ways of God will be embraced on it by people. And that's how we pray and intercede. And as we pray, we intercede. We go out to there and do the work of the masters. We go out there, we push the gospel. We go out there, we do good works. So that we can see these things. Ka, e kotobe. Manta, le boko to bele kete, unta bolo koto bo kaba, enkeri shabakata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Name, Jesus. Name. Well, the where we started from. Let me read that scripture. He said, "The voice of him as our forty. See the sequence. He first of all knocked down the glories of this earth. You know, when you want to serve God for the glories of this present life, hmm. what you can see, what you can touch, what you can smell, he first of all knocked it down here in this same scripture. He said, The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, Isaiah 40, verse 3, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And look at it, the glory. The glory is coming. And the glory of the Lord shall be what? Revealed. Don't forget, we say that in Revelation 19, when the bride made herself ready, right? Right? When the bride made herself ready, the dimension of power that came to the earth that judged Satan out of the earth, right? Judge Satan, judge all those things. And there is a dimension of power from God that reveal, open up the new heaven and the new earth. Because the bride has made herself ready. Until the bride is ready. The marriage, the marriage of the Lamb will not come. 
And until the bride is ready, these things will not happen. You see, the bride has made herself ready. How did she make herself ready? Ephesians 4, verse 11. Ari, he gave the pastor, prophet, teachers for, the, for perfect the saint, for to work of the ministry and edify the body of Christ so that the body will build itself up in love. That's what you see there. Now, come back to Isaiah 40, verse 5. He says, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The voice said, cry, and he said, what shall I cry? What did he say? All flesh is what? Is great. Please, can we stand up? Verse 6, the boy say cry, and he say, what shall I cry? He say, all flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fade, because the spirit of the Lord blows upon it. Say, so surely the people is grass. It's all this human glory, the pomp and the pride of men. He says, grass. You see, the grass wither, the flower fade, because the Spirit of the Lord blow upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass wither, the flower fade, verse 8 now. He said, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Verse 9. O Zion, that brings good tidings, get you up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that brings good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, behold your God. That's what the voice will cry. Can we echo it together? Behold, Behold your God. Your God. We begin to pray. All of these things that draw us all, that distract us from the main thing. Somebody God has called you now, your body is something else. It's not the people. You just want me to let me make it. Let me to become a popular person. Let me to become your call. You are not thinking the, how to the people, how to make a heart of men and women ready. How they can work with God. I'm proof. I went out into the blessing already. Lord, wash our hearts and you. Lord, purify our hearts with a pure hunger. Purify our hearts. Okay, touch our eyes with eyes up. With eyes up. How we can walk in deeper dimensions of glory. And now we can bring it here. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mutta lekata. Lebori shaba. Leboko to belekata. Ingari shabaka. Ingari shababakata. Lebori shabakata. Ikali shabole kuto malakata. Manta. Leboori shabaka. Ingali shabalakata. Ingada bolo tori shabakata. Bolo tori shibikata. Leboori shabakata. Ingali shabakata. Ingakali shabalakata. Motori shabaka. Le bokuto inta bolo shibikata. Ingali shabakata. Aka. Ingali shabalakata. Motori shabakata. Le bokuto balakata. Mantata. Le bokuto belikata. Ingagali shabaka. Ingagabu shabole kiti. Manta. Le bokuto beka. Ingagari shabaka. Ingali shibokuto inta bolo tori shabaka. Ingagabu tori shabaka. Ingagabu tori shabaka. Le bokuto Belikata, Ingaga, Bolo Rishaba, Anka, Ingalisha Babakada, Motori Shabakada, Ingalisha Balakada, Ingalisha Balakada, Ita Bolo Tori Shabaka, Ingalisha Bakada, Ingaga Bolo Tori Shabakanda, Motori Shabakata, in Jesus' name. If you stay inside cities, you know, live inside the city, you stay in the state government in the state and you live in the capital city those of us that stay in the state and live in the capital city or you stay in the capital city of your nation in places like nigeria where we have our schools call them primary schools and secondary schools go to all these villages look at all those schools you see children abandoned by parents abandoned by parents abandoned by by churches you have churches there everywhere Young, young girls, they are getting pregnant at the age of eight. At the age of eight, at the age of 12. See them, the school, they close from school, they are not under control. These are the people who should go and prepare. You see, the laborer is what? It's few.
The harvest is what? It's plenty. But the laborers are what? Who are amen? Let us carry this burden today. Let us put our hands to the plow and then ask God to send more laborers into the into the field. Which you want to see, babe, the dimension of glory that will come all of these places in their thousands. The thousands. See them? These young ones are coming. As a parent, uh, Pastor Namika, you are a parent. See the burden you carry for your children. Who will carry burden for those ones? Look at you, the burden you carry for your children. The God wants a body on earth. That is why he formed the church. The church will be like a mother here. He said, oh, Jerusalem, how I wish to have gathered you, Matthew 23. How I wish you have to gather you like a hen, a mother hen gathers her children, but you were not willing. He said, in the days of Shamgar, uh, 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 Judges chapter 5, he said, Deborah, Israel was under captivity, given to sin. He said, until I, Deborah, arose the mother in Israel. He met her, he said, go and call Barak. Barak, you go and gather 10,000 men and then go to war. God is with you. And then Israel was delivered out of captivity. People who will take initiative and say, all of this war that will come into the kingdom. We can, can we go to, you cannot go to every place, but your prayer can go everywhere. That in the villages that you cannot go, God will raise men there that will speak the gospel there. You are in Nigeria today, you cannot go to Rwanda, but your prayer can go to Rwanda. To remote places in Rwanda, that God raised men that will pick up the harvest in Rwanda. When you ask men to pray, they don't want to pray. That's how it is. Look at these young ones. Go deliberately go and stand. You see, some of these very beasts, when you see them close from school and you see them coming out, what are the future of these ones? Does it provoke body in our hearts? Just to just do our own things. Just do our fancy, fancy things. Do our fancy, fancy churches, uh, church life, and do our meetings, do our this one. No. It's beyond that. God gave the choice so that the church can prepare the generations. To so be a mother hand. I will pray again. Let there be a, we are saying this so that we are waking ourselves. And are waking a deep hunger and body in the midst of God's heart. The midst of God's house and in the midst of his people. Ekata, le boni shabakata, mankata, le bokuto baka, le gali shabakata, in gali shabakata, le bokuto baka, in gali shabakata. Please, before you pray this prayer point, let me give us some practical fact. I belong to a body now. That was set up by a very dear friend of mine as well. He's a missionary. He goes to rural missions. He goes there, he sees that missionaries are packing their loads and leaving the mission field because of suffering. And we mentioned something about prosperity in the church. That God has prospered us. <laughs> oh my goodness, it is well. He said, You go to this, go there and go and see for yourself. All this interior river rain. Mission, you see, mission, you see, couples, missionary couples, a lot of them they are packing and leaving the mission field. He said, when he saw it, he began crying. Locked himself for three days, he was praying. He took that couple, he said, No, while I am still alive, certain things cannot happen. He took that couple and took it to one brother. And then the brother gave them about 400,000. He said, Go back and establish again. And they'll say, I will, will support you. Then the brother now went and formed this uh, kingdom and trust fund. Where you will just collect, collect funds and give it to missionary families. People that are ready to go to all those lands where we where the gospel still must be preached. You know why the Muslims are going there? They are setting up free schools there, setting up their mosques, they are setting up things there and bringing them there. And we'll congregate in the cities and make all the noise because that's where the money is. Those places there is no money there. You have to go there and spend money. Not to go there and collect offering and send it to one headquarters. But to take money from, from take resources from where they are bigger resources to take it to those kind of places and spend it there. I'm saying this to create burdens in our heart. Where we need to be laboring. Even the laborers are few. The laborers are leaving the field. Can you see? Jesus said the laborers are few. Pray. The laborers are what? Even the ones that are indicated to labor, they are what? Can we pray? 
So if we are going to build system, let us build system of justice and equity and righteousness. If you build that kind of system and structure, people will not be living feud like that. Because we'll be looking for them to support them. I won't begin to bless him and thank you. But I will thank you. This is the blessing. You are waking us once again. You are wake us and wake our hearts. And wake our hearts. Let us wake up. Pray for an awakening. This is the blessing. To do the things that we ought to do and ought to be doing. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this. All of the prayers we prayed in the last 10 days and the ones who have prayed before now on this platform. Thank you because answers are here. Thank you. Answers are here. All the prayers are answered in the name of Jesus. Every one of them is answered in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray and then uh, activate the blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of the prayers that we have prayed. Thank you because we will walk in the answers to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you because we receive the answers already. Amen. In faith and in love that is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for all of the prayers that we've ever prayed on this platform. Thank you for answers. Amen. Thank you for answers. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for every heart that cries. Thank you. Thank you because you will wipe away those tears with answers. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. You will meet every heart with answer. In the name of Jesus. You will quench every test with answer. In the name of Jesus. And you will satisfy every hunger with answer. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for a new awakening. Thank you because we are awakening a new and awakening afresh. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for everything that we pray in our private and individual life. Thank you because we receive the answer. Because answer is come and walk in answer in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name of God. Thank you because these things are done and established. In the name of Jesus. And thank you for your, your elect children all over the world. Those that have not come into the faith, they come. They come in the name of Jesus. Amen. And those that are in the faith already continue to grow. Amen. At whatever level of the faith that we are, there is a place that we need to grow into. Amen. Thank you because we continue this growth trajectory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for conversion. Thank you because we are changed and we are changing. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, Our change is an ongoing experience. That conversion is an ongoing experience. Thank you because this this experience is ongoing. Thank you because we go from one level to another level. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, our Father. Thank you for your faithful love for this past 10 days. The strength for us to abide. And to keep abiding in these things from the day that you laid this foundation in our lives. And lay the foundation in our midst. Thank you because our strength is renewed like the eagle. In the name of Jesus. Thank you because our sight is activated afresh. In the name of Jesus. Thank you because we see beyond where we were seen before. In the name of Jesus. And thank you because we hunger beyond our last hunger. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We love you and bless your holy name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we have been tremendously blessed tonight. Yes, sir. Yes. Pastor, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. So, um, quick one. Our, our tongues for next month will start 16th of March. Okay. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ten, 10 days consistent prayers. From 16th March to 26th of March 2023. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. So we want to say a big thank you to everyone that made this a success. We want to appreciate you for your commitment, for your heart, for the burden you bear. It's not an ordinary burden. It's a kingdom burden. 
And my prayer is that it grows from strength to strength in the name of Jesus. Amen. That the hunger becomes deeper in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Can we pray for our pastor for more anointing? Yeah. Yeah, let's just pray it's a word of prayer for pastor. More anointing, more grace, more strength, more abilities in the name of Jesus. Yeah, that this fountain will not run dry. Amen. You know, our eyes have been open. Our eyes have been open to understand the call. It's called for change. God was a changing people. Father, we thank you for this unction. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord had never disappointed us before. It just from glory to glory, from one anointing to another, from one revelation to another. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for your servant. We ask that you bless him in all areas in the name of Jesus. We pray for the dear wife, Lord, for more strength in the name of Jesus. For the whole household, Lord, let your hand be mighty upon them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, let I forget, when you do your convention, you appraise it, not the number of people that came, but the number of people that changed. Yeah, so our mind, our mind has been touched, has been changed. What you, what you call church growth is not the building erected, but the men built. So let's have a good perspective of the call. And the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen.